Blessing each and every heart and soul in the building. Look on our young people today. How oh God, hallelujah. We let them know you love them too. We thank you, God, and we honor you. We ask you blessing in all of them. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. As you go back to your seats, we ask you to remain standing. We're going to come from Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, begin at the first verse. Yes. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Yes. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, and seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, if the clay is in the potter's hands, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. We praise and we thank God. For Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, the first verse, down to the seventh verse. At this time, Mother Madonna, open up my devotion service. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody.
Yeah. You know, I was telling y'all on Sunday, I think it was, how I had been asking the Lord to shield as we traveled to and from. But I should have been saying, Lord, just shield me everywhere I go today. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was leaving work on the day. And I was in a hurry. <laughs> And I made a boo-boo. <laughs> but I said, I thank God for that because it could have been worse. But he still shielded and protected me because it could have been, you know, I could have been stretched out. Somebody else could have been stretched out. But he just keep on keeping me over and over again. I thank God, you know, even for my health and my strength on today. I just thank God for being able to see each and every one of y'all. I thank God for being saved on today, sanctifying, filled his place, the Holy Ghost, and baptize his name. And I'm asking y'all continue to pray for them, continue to pray for y'all. We're here to have another good time Amen. in the Lord. Amen. So the motion service is over for you to tell of the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred, cause now
praise and we thank the Lord for being here on tonight. Yeah. Thank God for our life, yeah. our health, and our strength. Thank yeah. God for His grace and His mercy. Yeah. Our he has kept us. When we travel down the highway, we praise and we just thank God. Yeah. Our God has been good to us. Yeah. You know, we thank God how, you know, we came on the other night. We got blocked in that track, but we slowed down coming here. Yeah. But on the way back, you know, it was it was a little clear. It was backed up. Yeah. But I was telling uh, Deacon Troy when I came in, he asked me how the guy home all right. I told him, yeah. And when we got up there to exit 31, I mean, it was like five tractor trailers that had rear ended each other right out there in the road. And I said, oh, my Lord. I said, God, I thank you. Just did have enough room to ease off of 31 to get down and get home. But I praise and I thank God. I said, it could have been a bad, tragic situation because they got down to one lane. But I praise and I thank the Lord for grace and mercy. Even if the roads won't block, things can still happen. And I praise and I just thank God how about the first of September I was coming home. Uh, I had went somewhere and I was on the way back home and I had stopped for a school bus. And I was just sitting there and I just happened to look up in my mirror. Because you know, I, and sometimes you need to look in your mirror sometimes. And I had looked up in my mirror and I saw the car coming. I knew they were coming fast and I know they couldn't stop at that time. So I just held up to the steering wheel. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. It wasn't as bad. But I prayed and I thank God because, like I said, it could have been a tragic situation. A child could have been going across the road. Something could have happened. But I thank God for just being a good God. I thank God how He has kept all of us. You know, it could have been another way. And God has really, really been good to us. I thank God how He has kept our families together. Things happen, but we know God got everything under control. We may look at it one way, but God knows what He's doing. And I tell you, I thank the Lord on tonight for just so many things that the Lord has done in my life. You know, a lot of times we I have been here and sometimes we look back over our life, but not to go back. But to look back and see what God has done for us. And then I thank God. And I see the many ways that the Lord has made for me. But I couldn't see my way. You know, I look and I, you know, I realize that I can't do nothing without the Lord. I realize that. You know, there were times in my life I felt like I could do it. You know, sometimes we go on a job, I, I can do this, I can do that. But I learned we can't do nothing without the Lord. I don't care what we say. What we do, we cannot do anything without the Lord. And I tell you, I thank the Lord for the many ways that He has made for me. And I've seen ways that He's made for others. Yes. Things that He's done for other people. And I say, Lord, you don't have a respect in person. If you love them, you love me too. There ain't no respect in person. I tell you, I just praise and I thank God just so much for just the things that the Lord has done. I thank God for the General Assembly. I thank God for just every single thing that he has done. I thank God for what I've seen. I thank God for the word of God and the good teaching that yeah. we're here uh, at our church. You know, I praise and I thank God for our pastor, Pastor Marshall. I praise and I thank God for that because, I mean, when you got people that are still standing on the wall, yeah. that's yeah. a blessing right yeah. there. When you got people that are still standing up for what's right, yeah. no matter who against them, they still gonna stand up for what's right. I tell you, I thank the Lord for it on tonight. Lord. I thank the Lord for it. Because God has been good to all of us. Yeah. And we got a whole lot to praise God for. Because I'm saying it could be worse, but we might think our situation is bad. But I'm going to tell you, there are people that are worse off than us. And I think a lot about working at the hospital. You know, you see things, and, and when you look around, and you see it, they're calling all these different codes and stuff at the hospital. And, you know, I said, Lord, have mercy when I hear them. But then I said, Lord, I said, I think it could have been another way driving down the road, you know, asking God for mercy. When we get on the highway, they ask for traveling mercy. Yeah. You know, when we out there, because, you know, you don't know, I said, drive-bys, I still, somebody, I call them out. Drive-bys, road rage. Drive you know, little thing, you got road cops out there that might be doing wrong. I said, all kinds of things. I said, even health issues. When we ride down the road, so good. Medically could happen to us or the other person coming our way. But I thank God for shield and mercy on tonight. I just thank God, y'all. And just everything. And I'm asking God to thank God for being saved on tonight. Thank the Father as each and every one of you to know the worth of prayer. To continue to pray for us. Let us pray for one another. Because we all need prayer. And it ain't just one that's the We all need prayer. And let us pray for one another. This is a holy church. Church of the living God.
host. That is Jesus the Christ. Give an honor to God. You know, that was all right for Bishop. It might have been all right for Apostle Porter. But I said, let's give God a praise.
wind back. Hallelujah. The storm that passing over. Amen. We thank God for your little giving on tonight. How many are ready for the word? How many are ready for the word? Listen to me. Uh, how many are ready for the word? The word of God. Amen. What we may get all week long. Amen. But now it's coming down to we done baked it. We put the cake in the oven now. It's time to put the icing on it. Amen. And the preacher tonight is our very, very own. This is Michael Christian. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I believe y'all can do a little better than that. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
Brother Mark, he just went forth. Amen. But he told us that we need the power of the Holy Ghost. It's one of the prerequisites of going to heaven or getting to heaven. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. See, tonight is tonight. Uh, protocol, protocol has already been set, but we do honor. Amen. Uh, Pastor Porter and Pastor Leaf. They may be here for the first night. Amen. It's uh, uh, just a great honor to have them. Amen. Old warriors. Amen. Before my time. Amen. And I'm just a little, I'm just that many years old. And to our Pastor Livingston. Amen. And his deacon at this Amen. Praise to all our pastors and our loved ones and to everybody. Amen. You are somebody. Didn't that quite sing? I'm gonna talk about mine. You're gonna talk about yours. <laughs> Y'all <was> some. <laughs> Amen. Now look, I don't plan on being here too long. Do what the Lord has tasked me, and I'm gonna turn you loose. But I do want to say that we cannot have a holy convocation when there is division. Uh, I'm just, just talking about prerequisites for a holy convocation. Okay, I'm not just covering this anywhere, anywhere you go, in the church at any time. Amen. I'm just making some job descriptions about a holy convocation. Everybody got to be on the same page. Amen. Everybody got to know and got to understand the vision. Everybody got to be able to stay in their place. Amen. And don't say anything out of place. Leave it for the person that in that place. Uh, you have to come in with a mind already made up that I'm expecting something awesome to happen. I, I, I know it's for us believers, but we're going to have a mixed group of people here. And we're not going to be too selfish that we don't want souls to be saved. Right. Yeah. Amen. And in order to do that, we can't stifle God. No. That's right. Mighty God. You, you can't put a harness on God. And matter of fact, God is too powerful for you to do that. But since he has given us the will, yes. Amen. And he'll back off because he's not going to force anything on you. Amen. So we're so happy to know, amen, that God has been blessing us each night. Now tonight, amen, God has been warning us. God has been, amen, uh, allowing us to hear words of warning, words, amen, of sin. That's in the camp. Thank you, Lord. And I want you to know that hell is real. Just as sure as it was yesterday. And the only change that's going to happen or, or, or be caused in hell is that his mouth is just going to get bigger. Because the Bible says that it enlarges itself daily. And when it comes to the ebb of its fullness, it's going to be cast into the lake of fire. And if you ever get to hell, there's no way of getting out of the lake of fire. 
So the best thing to do, church, is stay out of here. And the most thing that we talk about is hell. We never talk about the labor fire, but we just talk about hell itself. Amen, because it's severe enough that we don't need to talk about the other place. And anything that's out of the will of God, amen, will cause us to go to hell. But there is a remedy that will allow us to miss hell. Uh -huh. There is a prescription. There is a drug that the head physician prescribes to his patients. Uh -huh. Work with it, Vincent. Work with it. It can't be bought uh, over the counter. And uh, it's non transferable. Yeah, that's right. Because you're going to have to give it for yourself. Can't go on mamas, can't go on daddies, can't go on pastors, but you got to go on yourself. And it was designed before time in eternity. Uh -huh. Go ahead, preach. Go ahead, talk to us. They got together and in eternity, uh, they what we call today concocted, that's what I say. But they divided, developed, they designed this drug called the Lamb of God. Amen. And before it could be released for public yeah. usage, yeah. it had to lay under the altar for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you make medicine, you, do, you got to let it sit for a while. You got to let it process. Yeah. And our problem with salvation is, Mother Yahweh, we don't let it process. Yeah. Uh -huh. We get it today and we go on tomorrow. Yeah. But the Lord said we need to sanctify ourselves. Process. Once you become a believer, you gotta go through the process. And the next process is sanctification. But it was all laid out in eternity. And so there's a a drug that was introduced that we have to take internally, spiritually. You can't go get a needle apostle, chap it and put it up in your veins. You can't go get this little cigarette wrap, put it inside it, light it, and smoke it. Uh huh. Can't do it. You can't get a little shot glass. And because it's not liquid. But liquid symbolizes it. Yeah, yeah, work with it, work with it. And you can't drink it. Uh-huh. Through the natural glass. Uh-huh. But I heard somebody say that when we worship him, we must worship him. In spirit and in, so this is a spiritual thing. This is a spiritual drug. That if it gets you high, y'all waiting on this one, right? When it gets you high, amen, it doesn't give you a hangover. Now it may weaken your body, because of the anointing, because of the power. Amen. But you won't wake up not knowing where you're at. Wondering how you got home with common sense. And so in the book of St. John, the chapter, I want you to 
know that you are not in this thing by yourself. So many of us want to talk to people, but we don't know who to talk to. Because we, we, we present an unapproachable uh, atmosphere. There's some things that we need to talk over, things that we need to tell somebody, amen, because when pressure builds up in a pipe without an outlet, it'll burst. You wonder why folk fighting in church. You wonder why folk doing all kind of stuff in church that they shouldn't be doing. Because the pipe has broken. Verse 1 through 3, it says in the book of St. Luke or St. John? St. John. Chapter 11. Don't lose it. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus uh -huh. of Bethany, uh -huh. the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that marriage which anointed the Lord with ointment. See, a lot of people confuse which Mary uh, was the, you know, what Mary did what. So now, you know, the Mary that did anointed his feet, you know what she did prior to that, right? And wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And let's jump to verse 11. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. And allow me to talk for a few brief minutes. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And as we develop this lesson, it starts out introducing Lazarus as being sick. Uh -huh. He had some type of illness, and we all know the story, he died. So it was an illness unto this. Uh -huh. But before he died, his sisters who were concerned about him, uh -huh. amen, they sent a message to where Jesus was. Yeah, yeah. They had a messenger and uh, they said, give this message to Jesus. Yes, yes. But by the time that the message got there, mm -hmm. Jesus, uh, Lazarus already died. Uh -huh. yeah. It said that it would take a day to get to where Jesus was. Uh -huh. And if it took a day for them to get to where Jesus was, and Jesus stayed another two days, and then on that fourth day, he made that journey. That made it four days. Uh, but Lazarus died, and uh, Jesus, in a nutshell, went and brought him back from the dead. He was bound hands and feet with a napkin over his face. Symbolized that it could have been an Egyptian burial. Because they mummified you. Uh -huh. They wrapped you about seven times. That's right. With the incense and mirth inside to keep you from smelling so bad. Uh -huh. Or it could have been of the Hebrew Jewish custom where when they wrap you, they wrap you with ties. Uh -huh. 
a millennium. Yeah. But how would it be he would back him? Yeah. And that's one of the things that the enemy want to do to the saints of God. Uh -huh. Number one, he want to get you sick. Yeah. Yeah. Number two, he want to bind you. Yeah. Cause you to die. Yeah. Amen. And put you in a grave where you had to walk 25 steps down yeah, yeah. just to get to where they were going to lay you. The scripture classifies the Lazarus family as friends of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lazarus fell ill and uh, Jesus still hung around Beth Bar. He still hung around a city outside of Jerusalem about 30 miles away. Yeah. Uh -huh. Stayed two days. Yeah. But Jesus was his friend. Now watch this. Uh -huh. Just because Jesus is your friend don't exempt you from trials and tribulations. Uh -huh. Just because you got the Holy Ghost don't mean amen, you won't go through something. Uh -huh. But the one the as we judge one another, amen, just because somebody fell sick, they had to have sin. They're going through some sick spells, but amen, they're doing something wrong. Oh, we've been labeled, you've been labeled, all of us been labeled with some kind, amen, of sin because we got sick. But it's not necessarily that you sin because of your sickness. Amen. He said that we we're going to have trouble, amen, and trials and tribulations. He said, but be a good cheer. Amen. So just because, amen, you're saved, you're wise, you're, 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 you're sanctified, yeah. you're running over with the Holy Ghost, you are known to be on mission. Amen. But it does not exempt you from going through trials and tribulations. Amen. It does not exempt you. Some say amen that it's hard for me to believe, come on Joe, that you didn't sin because of the boys and because of the sickness upon your body. But if Joe was a perfect and upright man and still fell sick, amen, Trouble and temptation comes to us all. Even Jesus, amen, faced some adversities. Being the son of God, amen, there were some trials and tribulations that he went through. So just because you come to church, don't exempt you. Just because you pay your tithes, don't exempt you. Just because you come to Bible study and prayer meeting and Sunday school, amen, and all the services, amen, it does not exempt you from the trials of life. I believe Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace, and that you would, in this world now, not the world to come, but in this world, you should have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Job said a man that's born of a woman is up a few days. And what? So church membership just don't exempt you. It don't exempt you from sorrows. It don't exempt you from the cares of life. Amen. But you will find yourself, amen, at your wit's end because you are confused about who you are. I think it was David. He said, I wonder that I have the wings of a dove. I would then fly away and be at rest. If I can run from this struggle, if I can evade it, if I can, amen, uh, get between it, amen, I would. If I could go to the end of the world, he said, I would do that. But if you get your trust in God, amen, you will make it all right. It was a time that we would come to 
together as believers, if anyone got sick, they would have soup, some would clean the house, some would do their laundry, someone would do their yard. But now, that relationship seems like it has dwindled out of the hearts of God's people. Instead of us, amen, visiting and, and, and helping one another, amen, we, we got our equipment, we got our riding, we got that zero turn, amen, we got the weed eater, we got the tree reacher, we got all that stuff. And the mother of the church outside trying to mow her grass. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. It's bad when you go to their house and you sit and eat and you know the food is not tasting like, like it used to. It's because they get to a point now they get forgetful. Yeah. And that's just a natural thing. So what we need to do is go and they bring meals to the house. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah, that might be too much for some of us. Jesus identified them as his friends. And it was because he visited them frequently. If you got a true friend, Amen, no matter, amen, who they are, where they are, if they can't physically get to you, they'll call you. They'll check on you. Talking about a true friend. Amen, and, 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 and they don't mind telling you when you're wrong. Huh? They don't mind telling you that you should have said what you said. Now go apologize. But when you are disciplined in church, you get all upset. You want to leave the church. Amen. Then when you leave the church, you want to talk about the church. But how many of you know God's got a way that's mighty sweet? He's got a way that he's able to draw us closer to him. Amen. Because of his ability to draw. Amen. Because of his ability, amen, to be a sweet-smelling Savior. And one of the things that he taught his disciples was to pray. Coming up as a young man and matching up, we would always wake up 6 o'clock in the morning. We're five tipping still. And my great grandmother would have us on our knees. Every John Brown person in the house, except my great granddaddy, he was the man, you know, he did what he wanted to do. But we children had no choice. She taught us how to pray. And Jesus taught the disciples because he was telling them that it's going to come a point in your life. Amen. That you are going to need to know how to pray. You are going to need to know how to get a word from earth to glory. Amen. And I want to give you a model prayer. I want to teach you, amen, how you should pray to my father. And she taught us how to pray to God sometimes. Amen. And you will hear her in a room praying, and then she'll start crying. And I'm thinking, what is Jesus doing to her? <laughs> Not knowing, amen, that she was talking to the Lord and she was getting emotional. Amen. The anointing was taking over. And she grabbed us, me and my brother in a service of revival. The Norton hit her, she jumped up and stopped dancing and praising God, and me and my brother was in her arm just like this, and she never dropped us. Never dropped us. The Norton makes a difference. You yourself, you're gonna, you're gonna break your baby's back. And another thing they would tell us is that when the Lord is doing his work, be quiet. A storm would come up, thunder and lightning, and they would say, go somewhere, boys, girl, sit down somewhere and be quiet. The Lord is doing his work. But when I think about it, I say, yeah, that's right, but 
be able to do his work when the sun shines. He just don't do his work when it's thunder and lightning. But he do it when there's a bright sunshine. He do it when there's a cool breeze. He said that in the uh, in the cool of the day he walked in the garden. His work never stops. Whether it's raining or whether it's shining, Jesus, God is always able to work. And not only that, as I get to my cross, our problem is that we only pray when a storm comes up. My God, my God. We only seek God when we need help. We don't pray when everything is going well. Thank you, Lord. But when we fall sick, we pray. When we go through a calamity, we pray. But I want you to know that Paul and Silas are examples of how we should pray. The Bible says it was at midnight. Yes, sir. Right? They were praying yeah. and singing, right? Yes, right? And at midnight, there was an earthquake, right? Yeah. Right, 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 right. But the only reason they were able to pray through their imprisonment is because they just didn't start praying at midnight. But they started praying in the noonday. They didn't wait until they got in trouble. They didn't wait until, amen, they was at loss. They didn't wait until they was at their wit's end. But they pray daily. That's what we should do. We should pray daily. We should pray before we lose our health. We should pray before we lose our eyesight. We should pray before we lose our steps. We should pray before we lose our health. Amen. Don't wait until you can't move. Amen. Don't wait, amen, until you can't speak no more. Amen. Why are you a young? Why are you a young man, a young lady? Amen. Why are in your youth? Amen. Remember the Lord in your youth because when you get old, you're not going to be able to walk and stand as long. Amen. You're not going to be able to run as far. Amen. And Jesus teaches us, amen, that man should always pray and not faint. Amen. Why? Amen. Because one day going to be able to stand long like we used to. One day, amen, we're going to have to give up, amen, driving. One day, we're going to have to give up our profession. One day, we're going to have to give up, amen, these worldly things because, amen, of our health. So while we're able to pray, don't wait, amen, until you can't pray. A lot of people have gone, amen, was unable to say, Lord, forgive me. Amen, because they waited, they didn't know death was at the door. Amen, and the reason Paul and Silas was able to do that, amen, is because they practiced doing uh, the good things. How many of you pray when you get up in the morning? Thank you, God, for waking me up to see another day. Thank you, God, for the blood running warm in my veins. Amen, thank you, God, for allowing my moments to roll on. And I want to pay you what I owe you. Amen, I owe you all because you have given me all. You have given your son who shed his blood on Calvary's cross. Amen, so I'm not going to wait until trouble come in order to sit up, amen, to prayer. I'm not going to wait until I get in trouble to praise you. chance. Amen. So I'm looking at Jesus when amen. He went on down and he decided to go to Bethany. And on his way to Bethany, the disciples said, I don't think you want to go because you remember last time we were there, that man was out of town. I want you to know, and I want to tell you tonight, don't let the devil run you out of town. Wherever God tells you to go, go setting the block for you. Amen. I heard David said that the snare of the fire is broken. Now are we as 
escaped. They may form it, the weapons of our warfare, amen, and it's mighty to them, pull it down. And I want you to know God has given us power, amen, to pull it down. Amen, you can disrupt the kingdom of Satan because God has equipped us, amen, with weapons of warfare. That's right. Mean as the devil. Yeah. 
lead come forward. Nobody could attach, no soul could attach itself to his soul because of his body. And he came forth up 25 steps. Because his hand was bound by his side. That's right. His feet bound together. Oh, yeah. Napkin over his face. My Lord. So how in the world did he find his way up those steps? Come on, come on. Work it out, preacher. Jesus called Lazarus by his name. He came forth. Jesus then said, loose him. My Lord. And let it go. Let it go. Many of us are still bound. Because somebody won't let you go. You still bound because they got their foot on your head. You still bound because, amen, you're not, amen, in there. Uh, clear. That's right. People will hold you down. When they see a gift in your life, people will plot against you when they see growth in your life. But if you got a friend that will support you, amen, you don't have to worry about, amen, those naysayers. Amen, but you keep doing what God called you to do. And the thing I love about Jesus is that, amen. It doesn't matter who you are. There was a man that had a shirt that was sick of the dead. And the ruler came to Jesus and said, look, I don't need you to go to my house. But I believe it. And, and if you speak the word, he'll receive his healing. And all I'm telling you tonight, Jesus is so up close to you friend, amen, he'll come to your rescue. Yeah. Lazarus was his friend. He went, amen, did what he had to do, yeah. but he went to see his friend. Yeah. He went to see about his friend. Oh, yeah. Amen. He knew what was going on because he was human and divine. Yeah. Amen. But he had to wait until, amen, the power of God could be manifested. Yeah. And he went, amen, he did what God called him to do. That's why we have a good friend the Bible said that he, a man shed his blood on Calvary Cross. Amen. Ain't it a good friend? Yeah. Amen. He didn't know who we were. Some of us, amen, wasn't born at the time. Amen. But we know now, amen, what he sacrificed. He sacrificed his life. And I want you to know before you leave tonight, amen, if you need a friend, Jesus will be your friend. Somebody to talk to. Amen. All you got to do is call on Jesus. If you need somebody, amen, to get you through, amen, some hard time, call on the name of Jesus. Mary and Martha knew what Jesus could do. They knew that if he could get there in time, amen, Lazarus would not have died. But I want you to know whether death come or not. Amen. But at the name of Jesus, Call on the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're going through, amen, some mental issues, call on the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're going through some family issues, call on the name of Jesus. For in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. And I'm so glad, amen, that he's a friend of mine. He's a friend of mine. Amen. When I was seeking sin. Amen. Seeking to rise no more. Amen. But the captain of the ship had my despairing cry. I was drowning, Mother Yahweh. I was 
seeking and seek uh, shame. I was seeking and quit shame. And then I couldn't swim. And then I was too heavy. And then the photo shame. But one day, Jesus came along, got on that boat. And then while the storm was out, he got on the ship. And then he told me, hey man, look, the wind and the storm. Folk look at you 
but they don't see what's on the inside. And they grade you by what they see and not what they know. But don't allow people to dictate who you're supposed to be. You take control of your life and put it in the hands of the Lord. And we extend it in all the call tonight that we might be able to pray with you. Whatever the sickness is, there's still life in your body. And I'm afraid that I'm not to say that it's not over with yet. The pale horse is still riding. And it's not over with yet. And we need to get a new hope. We need to get a new Amen. Uh, 